Hey, Shalom, Israel. First off, I would like to say, Ka Halal, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Chakodash. would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the brothers that sincerely pushing this word, you know, in all diligence and faith. Uh, I just want to say a few words. You know, I was meditating uh, on a, on a uh, scripture in Galatians, the fourth chapter. So I just wanted to hit a few points. Hopefully, this will be edifying to the body. Uh, I'm going to just go straight to it. Uh, Galatians uh, chapter 4, I'm going to start right at the top. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. So I was just meditating on this scripture. And right now, and I'm going to get another scripture to, to kind of back up what I'm reading now. But right now, as heirs... Of the, the, the rulership and the throne of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the children of Israel during this particular dispensation of time were having to serve captivity. Like it says in uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and 6, it says, I have uh, seen folly set in great dignity. I've seen uh, servants walking, you know, and then basically, or he said, servants upon horses. He said, uh, Solomon said, I have seen servants upon horses. And princes walking upon the earth, meaning things at this appointed time are set for the nation of Israel's the true heirs to the kingdom of heaven to be set at a low, at a humble, at a meek position. Even though, you know, the whole uh, framework of, of, the, of the legacy of Israel and the promises that the Most High made to our forefathers, it has us, it has the nation of Israel set up to be heirs of the throne under Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. But right now. We're having to be built up into that into that rulership, you know, just starting off as babes in the faith. First, because we were, you know, at one point without this word, Gentiles, not knowing who we were. And then as babes, by the washing of the word, being baptized, having our mind renewed, we now have a chance to grow thereby in the spirit. But it's a growing process nonetheless. So everyone, based on their particular measure, in the faith, you know, we're being brought up and the ultimate perfection in the kingdom is when we're going to actually be, you know, rulers and governors and priests and all of those uh, godly things. But it's, it's a progression. But I'm going to read it again. Galatians 4 and 1, it says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. And mostly the greatest example to date, Yahweh shot. Who is going to be Lord of all in the kingdom. Like it, the, the prophecy says in Isaiah the uh, ninth chapter concerning Yahweh Shah. You know, the government is going to be at his feet. I'm loosely paraphrasing. But right now, or rather 2,000 years ago, when he walked the earth in the Roman Empire, you know, he was crucified for the entire nation of Israel, though he was a blameless man in the flesh. So, though he was Lord of all, he had to be servant for the whole nation. So, just in a uh, a broader scope, Yahweh Shah, he's the greatest example of that. But we also, as being joint heirs with Yahweh Shah, you know, having the like mind, coming in the likeness to the best of our ability of Yahweh Shah, you know, we come in that same a uh, lot as well, you know. So that's why brothers, you know, or guys just within uh, Israel, just Jake, they like to say we was kings and. You know, they like to talk about certain things as far as our uh, past glory and even the glory that we're going to get, you know, in the kingdom. But right now, it's the build up process to the perfection to, to have that in our spirit, sown in our spirit in the kingdom to where we're going to be in perfection. You know, having the laws, statutes and commandments in our inward parts. But right now, it's about practicing and the instruction and the measure of how we exercise our faith through the spirit is just through the word, the teaching, the prophesying of the word, the testimony of the gospel, the good news of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, you know, being servant in order to be set up, you know. It says, verse 2, Galatians 4 and 2, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed by the father. Or of the time appointed of the Father. So that's what it's talking about. Just backing up. It's explaining verse 1. 
It says, but it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father, meaning children that are heirs to a throne. They're not just kings, you know, just because it's set up for them to be the heir once the uh, the king, you know, dies or whatever the case may be. You know, every uh, king, you know, it talks about this, I believe, in Wisdom of Solomon too. He, he comes from the process that all men do, you know, from the, the womb of a woman having to be nursed and, and grow. And it's the same thing within this thing of ours as well, man, even though... The promises fell on our forefathers, we being the children of Israel, and hopefully we're the elect. We hope to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shah. We're in the process of the government. We're in that build-up process. We're under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. And we know who the real uh, tutors and governors of the nation are, man. It all starts with the apostles of Great Millstone, you know, who led a, a, a great of men into the faith. To push the word at the high level that is getting pushed at right now in this current time in the end, man. You know, so we have to. Uh, that's why the scriptures also talk about giving uh, double honors to the, uh, the elders, man. You know, the men that laid the groundwork. We're, we're under. To, we're to be under their tutelage, man, and brought up. It says until the time appointed of the Father, and that's really talking about until the time of the destruction of Great Babylon, which is America, until Yahweh Shai. Uh, sets out for the deliverance of Israel And then of course The kingdom of heaven is going to be established on earth With Yahweh Shah You know governing And then of course the, the elect of Israel Being joint heirs and the whole nation of Israel Is going to be in, in power In rulership You know that's the time appointed of the father Which the father only knows You know But it says until that time we're under tutors and governors You know So just thinking about how your mindset, you know, we can't get too big headed because the most high may have, you know, bestowed brothers with certain gifts. We got to just really just grind this thing out and really uh, strive to grow, you know, under the tutelage of the men who taught us, man. Just laboring in that example that was set before us, you know, because our apostles and elders, they leave a, a great, you know, example of how this thing is supposed to go, you know. Until the time appointed of the father, it says, verse three, it says, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. So that's talking about before we came into this knowledge, man, knowing that we're Israelites, knowing the ways, the, the law, statutes and commandments of the heavenly father, how to uh, govern your life, how to govern your family, how to just rule your spirit, you know, and just be an upright man of character and integrity, you know. It says, even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. So, really, this is talking about uh, when the nation of Israel, you know, before they, they had this, this knowledge, before they had the, the remembrance, the, the, their pure minds were stirred back to remembrance to know the way that they're supposed to go. Not in bondage to the elements of this world. In this world right now, as we know, it is controlled by Satan. You know, and really, brothers, for however long we've been in the faith, you know, for, you know, the, the apostles, you know, they've been in the faith for like 30 years, 20 years. And, you know, some of the, the elder, uh, younger elder brothers, you know, they may have been in 10, 11 years, you know, but even so, the time that we were in the world under that bondage, that was a greater time for a lot of us, man. So that shows more so the growth you know, opportunity, you know, that we need to serve out, you know, being under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father, you know, and I wanted to look up that word elements. That's why I had the, um, the, 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 uh, strong concordance out here. Let me just grab that real quick. This is the G 47, 47 for that word elements, the elements. It says Stokeon. And I'm going to get the strong definition. It says, neuter of a presumed derivative of the base, something orderly, an arrangement, a serial, fundamental, constitute, proposition, element, principle, rudiment. Let me see what the lexicon says. It says, a, a row, rank, series, 
hence property or properly that which belongs to any that of which is composed any first thing from which the others belonging to some series yeah but in that scripture i just want i was curious what that word said it was talking about the elements of this world you know i'm gonna read it again galatians 4 and 3 even so we when we were children were under were in bondage under the elements of the world you know and basically it's just talking about just all of these um demonic forces and things these arrangements that's against the most high those are the elements of this world which we were at one time in complete bondage not knowing what way to go just being completely subject to the way of esau's kingdom but now through the, the word of the heavenly father you know we have a chance at, re at redemption in life and to grow in the process under tutors and governors to come into the fullness of the kingdom, man, into that, the, 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 through, the, the rulership, you know, not the, the through the ship. I don't know why I was about to say that, but to really come into the legacy as being heirs to the promise under Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, under Yahweh Shah, it says, verse four, but when the fullness of the time was come the most high sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law so it is is uh, explaining what it talked about in verse 2 uh, the fullness of the time it says but when the fullness of the time was come the most high sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law so when the fullness of the time for the uh, the destruction of babylon and um the deliverance pretty much and uh, the transition of the deliverance of the elect of Israel and the, the establishment of the kingdom, that's going to come when Yahweh Shah uh, returns, when the Most High sends his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. And I'm going to read verse 5. It says, To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And it says, And because ye are sons, the Most High sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So, Hey man, that's that's the point right there. Under Yahweh Shah, because his name is a nomen omen, it means he is the deliverer or he is salvation. He came to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. You know, and really it starts off because based on the 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 the, the law for sin, you know, we we would be basically dead. You know, we would be worthy of death because there's sins unto death that, you know, many of us have committed. But through that sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made, he redeemed us from the weight of the law that we can repent. Through his blood sacrifice, we can repent and have access still to the Heavenly Father to be washed of those sins. To re receive adoption of sons and not be cast away as a heathen. You know? Verse 6, it says, And because ye are sons, the Most High has sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So that's all I wanted to get on that. But the beauty of it all, and being linked in with Yahweh Shah to receive the kingdom, to receive uh, that rulership, just being heirs, that's a blessing, man. That's a blessing at the end of the day. But right now, we have to do just as Yahweh Shah himself did. Where he made himself of uh, no reputation. Even though. Because that's why you had characters like uh, Judas Iscariot. He uh, basically forced Yahweh Shah's hand. Because he knew Yahweh Shah was the. Uh, he knew Yahweh Shah was the, the, the son of the Heavenly Father. And that he could basically just overthrow the Roman Empire. But Yahweh Shah knew he had to fulfill the will of his father. So he, he wasn't acting according to his own will. He was obedient unto death. And that's the same examples that, you know, the disciples, us, and, you know, the uh, men that follow in, in, in his likeness, followers of, of Hamashiach, that's the mindset we're supposed to come in as well, you know. But it was a scripture I wanted to get. Oh, it's Salak. It was Romans, the 8th chapter. I was just going to back up what I read in uh, Galatians, the fourth chapter, just going into how 
we received that adoption unto life through Yahweh Shah pretty much. Through that blood sacrifice to where we're not bound by the curse and the weight of the law. You know, that's a beautiful thing, man. And that's something we really don't even deserve, but nonetheless, that's why brothers should not get all bent out of shape. Because the main thing that gets a lot of guys out, I'm just speaking in general to a lot of men that may have came into the faith and fell out of the faith. It usually all boils down to the order and the arrangement of how Yahweh Shah has everything playing out through the spirit. When we're all, you know, brothers that are under the apostles and, you know, the elders... We're all babes in this faith, man. We're all trying to grow thereby in the spirit, you know. So you always have to, you know, be in a a, a childlike mindset in the spirit. But indeed a grown man, because um, the scriptures talks about in 2 Corinthians 13, Paul talked about when I was a a, a child, you know, I spake as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So, you know, in man and in, in, in deed and in character and behavior, you, you got to live as a man. But in mind and meekness to serve the Lord and to serve the flock of the Lord, you have to be lowly, you know. But I'm, yeah, I want to start here. This is a Romans chapter 8, verse. Verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of the Most High, they are the sons of the Most High. So, brothers of the hopeful elect that are pushing this word right now, man, going hard nonstop on the uh, airways, you know, we were led by the Spirit. And St. John 6 and 63 tells you that the uh, the Spirit is the Word. You know what I'm saying? It says, The flesh profit of nothing. But the Spirit quickeneth, and the Spirit is the, is the Word of the Heavenly Father, the words of this Bible. And then, furthermore, the, the proper doctrine and nutrients to bring this book to life to where you can apply it through your, your, your walk of faith more and more. Being raised under uh, tutors and governors until the time appointed, you know. That's what this whole thing is about, you know, just coming up in that order. To receive that inheritance as joint heirs of Yahweh Shah, getting something that we don't deserve at the end of the day, man, being looked out as sons along with Yahweh Shah, the only begotten son. Verse 15, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba Father. So, man, we didn't receive no spirit of bondage again to fear. Uh, the, the the elements, the rudiments, that's what I was reading in that definition of, of this world, you know. We have the spirit of confidence with faith to serve our power in all boldness and, of course, in, in wisdom and humility, you know, until the fullness of the time, you know. Just having the, the complete spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah through this word because I just read up a verse up. It says, for by the spirit we were led. It says, but we, you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So we've been adopted, you know, as sons, just like Yahweh Shah himself, back unto the Father, you know, through the blood sacrifice of Yahweh Shah. Verse 16, Romans 8 and 16, it says, the spirit itself bear witness, witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. So that's why the scriptures also says, try the spirit by the spirit, meaning the word. And furthermore, for men of faith... You know, not just speaking the word and putting up videos or where you you on the highways and the byways, you know, going in, prophesying and preaching, but actually applying what you're preaching and what you're bringing out in your lessons, man. Making this word have life and meaning in your walk of faith. That's the spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we're the children of the Most High and joint heirs of Yahweh Shah. I'm going to read this last verse. Romans 8 and 17, and it says, And if children then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Hamashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So, just how we're starting off, being children, you know, under tutors and governors until the time appointed by the, the Heavenly Father. If we're children, then we're heirs and heirs 
of the Most High and joint heirs with Yahweh Shah. So, man, even though it's going to be order, of course, in the kingdom of heaven, but we're going to have a nice, the elect, if we, we're set up to be those men, we're going to have a nice uh, rulership seat in the highest government that's ever ruled on the planet Earth, man. So it's just something to fight for, man. You know, it's something to really just fight for. Being uh, glorified with Hamashiach, just suffering, taking on those sufferings, because none of us going to have to suffer as, as bad as Yahweh Shai did. We all go through our hell and things of that nature, but he was the greatest example. And if we just take part in those sufferings, we're going to be glorified together with him. I'm going to read this last verse, and I'm gonna, I think I'm going to uh, probably just close it out on this one. This is Romans 8 and 18. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So this time right now, man, this is a short season. We're pilgrims passing through. The scriptures also talks about in 2 Peter the third chapter that a day with the Most High is like a thousand years and a thousand years a day. The Most High doesn't view time the way we, that we view it. Like all this wickedness that's been going on, the fact that Esau he has had a global hegemon established throughout the uh, planet in the sight of the Most High, this has been a very short time span. But to us, it seems very long because of our, our, our captivity and our predicament right now. But I'm going to read this again. It says, Romans 8 and 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So the things that we go through now on a day-to-day, -day, even the monotony of your day, the things that annoy you and irritate you and just make you uh, upset or whatever the case is, all the things that we go through, the pitfalls and the, 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 the mishaps and the disses and the dats, all of these sufferings that we're going through, especially if we're doing it in sincerity, as being uh, suffering as Christians for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, the things of this uh, present time are not worthy to be compared with, with the glory which shall be revealed in us, being joint heirs with Yahweh Shah. Man, really first receiving that salvation out of the uh, most devastating destruction ever known about, like it talks about in Daniel, the 12th chapter. And then, of course, having uh, high seats in Yahweh Shah's government in the kingdom of heaven. So it's always a lot on the line, man. You know, that should be the mindset day for day. And, of course, brothers, we know we got this word. We know at the end of the day that Esau... He's going to be uh, below us. He's going to be in captivity under us. And we're going to be set up to rule over all these nations. You know, we got to make sure we're walking in all, all wisdom, you know, in, in all meekness as Yahweh Shai himself, you know, having integrity, knowing that this kingdom of heaven is, is within you and within your spirit and your action and not trying to just boast yourself in Esau's kingdom through vanity, you know, just being uh, a, a meek servant and doing what's required of you to just, you know, make your, your reasonable sacrifice unto the Most High and through his son, Yahweh Shah. So with all being said, hopefully this was edifying and made sense to the body. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, or Kakadash, uh, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect.